kids that have uh, hundreds of labels, 100, 150 labels, things that they can tell you what it is. 95 of them are animals, 40 of them are food. And, and, and of those animals, it's like, it's like you know, camel, armadillo. Um, at what point do you need to know this is another aside? At what point do you need to know what an armadillo is? And, and how many you know, typical kids that, that, that have a repertoire of 200 words, do they know what, uh, well, they typical kids probably do because they, it, it's different because we have all these books and, and all of that. But think about function. If you, if you were in a foreign country and had 30 words, what would those be? And, and I doubt that it would be armadillo. <laughs> be, first, it would be beer, <laughs> pretzels. No, um, but there's a, there's a certain, so sometimes we don't think about that. We think about, oh, we're going to teach these kids and we're going to use this, this list of, of you know, the, the picture, the builder, builder cards. It's 250 of those. Um, you, you really have to be individual. And, and that's part of like the, the function, just to say, well, the kid's prompt dependent or it's not functionally useful, oftentimes we're teaching things that aren't going to be. So again, back to this is, sometimes I repeat myself a lot of some very important keys. And, and one is teaching things that are going to be useful. And if you can't, if, you, if we're struggling, we're saying natural environment teaching, but we can't figure out how to get what we just taught into the natural environment. We have to question, why did I teach that? I don't have a, any cows at all. So how am I gonna, now, that, now that's, a, you know, that's a, a, an exaggeration. It doesn't have to be, you don't know, say, oh, I'm not gonna teach a cow because we, we, we don't have any cows. But cows or fire trucks or fire, are, you know, the kid's probably never going to need a fire truck or use a fire truck. But that's such a part of our culture and, and language. Kids talk about fire trucks. Kids talk about cow, cows and old McDonald's. So, so I don't want you to take it too far as saying, boy, that's not directly functional to my kid's life. Because you know, if, if the goal is to increase language and increase socialization, reading a book, you know, you're not going to go to the moon. Kid may have never been to Africa or, or, or going to Africa. But it's something, it's, it's, it can be drawn in. So that's something I kind of like to look at too. Is this relevant? And, and the point is like, well, what's relevant? The kid's never going to go to the moon. He's not going to be an astronaut. Why are you even bothering with this? But by teaching this repertoire, it can be used. That's what I call relevant. How can it be used? Well, I just listen to typical kids. My kids talk about things all the time. And, you know, <coughs> my daughter's not going to be a unicorn, I hope. But, you know, she could, they, you know, but that's part of, of the thing. So keep that in mind when you're selecting targets. It's more like, can I make this useful in my kid's life? Not, it absolutely has to be an integral feature of something that uh, directly um, uh, results in survival. Yeah, that's, that's a little overboard. So just kind of, I like to balance, because sometimes you, you, know, say, you say something, you say, don't quite take it to that extreme. Um, here's an umbrella. Uh, well, what's an umbrella for? Let's teach things about an umbrella. Open the umbrella. You know, this is open. This is shut. You know, um, what do you use an umbrella for? Let's teach anything here's about a, an umbrella. Ball, bouncing a ball. Throw the ball. Kick the ball. Um, what is bouncing? Um, and. You know, I'll hold up this clicker sometimes, and it'll be anything I say it is at the time. So, like right now, this is a, a ball. You know, and you have to be careful with things like, uh, what is this ball? Um, okay, what am I doing? Bouncing. And if you try, if you if you if you get ahead of yourself and say, what do you see? Bouncing ball. Bouncing ball. Okay. Now I say, what is this? Bouncing ball. Okay. That's a problem. I see kids say you know, things like. What is this? Combing hair. See the problem with that? You gotta be able to, uh, to separate those. And those are easier, by the way. And, and, and these, how do you do that at the table? It's harder. These are the you can, but how do you, how do you teach verbs or pictures? Kind of tough. No. That is not running. Yeah. So, so these are examples of things that it's, it's easier to teach when you're playing with the kid in natural environment situations. You can separate. This is the ball. Can you imagine it? This is the ball. 
this is bouncing. This is a ball, this is bouncing. You can separate those. Be careful before you put them together. Make sure that the kids can do them separate. Now, people ask the question, well, what should you teach first? What should you teach colors and, and adjectives? Those are a little, little harder. And of course, th this is why it's good to stick to like the BB map for the, for the kids that are, that are at that level. So you're not teaching things out of order. Why are colors harder? Well, you know, I can see, you know, this, the bounce is clearly separate. This is a bounce, this is a roll, and this is a ball. I can separate this. This is a remote, and this is black. See, this is the remote, and this is black. Put these together, we have a black remote. Okay? So clearly you can see how that's harder. And so just be in cognizant of the order of, of which. And that's why I see kids like, well, they're prompt dependent. I see programs, they get in trouble because they might take for granted. Well, my kid, my typical four-year-old picked that up pretty quick. Typical. Um, you have to pay attention to, attention to that. Uh, drinking from a cup, all, all examples. Um, scrimmage, contrived trials in the natural environment. Um, setting up situations in the natural environment that will allow for practice. I'll show some, some videos of that. Um, it's like, again, back to, I taught you this, you've got the skill, now how can I set something up so that you can practice it? Um, examples, um, giving the student uh, jelly for his toast but no knife. Now, of course, this is back to like, well, my kid can't spread jelly, okay, well, um, there's, these examples aren't going to fit everyone, but the point is like, think about the you know, picture, what do you do at breakfast? You, Hey, here's, what do you want for breakfast? You want some toast? Okay, here you go. And and you want some jelly on that? Or maybe I'm not even going to ask you that because I know the routine. Here it is. I'm going to spread that. Here's your milk. I'm going to pour that. Well, think about what you can do. Think of the motivation. Here's your jelly. Here's the jelly and here's the toast. Or here's the toast. You need to ask for the jelly. Okay? It's really like, sometimes you have to do less. Do a little bit less, but be ready to teach. And, and sometimes it's like, well, if I give my child jelly, well, one, he doesn't know how to, how to spread the jelly. Okay, well, can you teach him? So that would be a prerequisite. Let's assume then that, that you te taught him to, to spread the jelly. Now you put the jelly down and, and you just sit there. And the kid puts his fingers in the jelly and starts eating it like that. I say, well, okay, um, why, why not prompt? So how would you teach a child to label a uh, knife, for example. I might point this out, I, I might hold this up, now this is a knife, by the way. Um, I might hold this up and say, knife. Now the next time I'm gonna say, say knife, knife, okay, good. Now this is a mm, knife, good. And I'm gonna fade that prop. And you're thinking about, well, you're doing that at the table, and what's the reinforcer? Probably, you know, a, a tickles or, or something else. But in this case, the knife is now valuable. Hopefully, because sometimes you have to you're not allowed to spread the jelly with your fingers, and yet you sometimes have to establish that. But I put the jelly down, and I have the knife right here, and I'm going to prompt right there. Hey, knife! There you go. Or I might say, Hey, you want to draw me a circle? Oh, you want this ice cream? All right. So you know what? Could you draw me a circle on the paper here? Um, here, draw me a circle. It draws a circle. Good, all right, here's a little bit of ice cream. Oh, now can you draw a square? It draws a square. Okay, good. Draw a line. And that's not even relevant. It could be just draw. Draw. And, and, and the point is, I want to get you to, I want to, I want to see if I can get you to ask me for this marker or this pen or whatever it is. And, and at first, I'm, I'm sort of like, I'm giving it away for free. The reinforcer is the ice cream or, what, or whatever it is. The behavior, the, the first one is drawing the circle. The, the ultimate behavior I'm looking for is marker, please, or connect the marker, or simply marker. And, and I'm going to start out by, at one time after I'm handing the marker, I'm handing the marker, and now I'm just going to stop. I'm going to say, hey, can you draw me a circle? I'm going to do like that. And, and I'm going to pause a second or two, and then I'm going to say, oh, say marker, marker. And I'm going to teach that the same way I would teach a tap. Except now, I'm, I'm using, I'm taking that, Natural, and, and there's a good example of a natural environment. You're playing with your kids at the table. You're drawing your art. Why not get some of those trials in? Um, 
And those are, those are going to be good because now it's like, from the kid's perspective, like, boy, I just learned something. I wanted that marker. You taught me how to ask for it. Now I, I got that. So that makes sense. Whereas when we're sitting at the table, you, you hold up a picture and I say elephant and you give me an M&M. &M. Why am I doing that? Okay. And again, I'm not, I'm overstating and I'm, I'm not, you know, we have to do some of that, but you can clearly see that's probably not as good of a trial. And in some cases, I'd say that's, you know, why are we doing that at all? But, but we do need to do something. Um, clearly, you should be able to see that that, I'm, that example there is like, now I'm giving you something. Um, now, granted, there's, you know, it's not every, I, I don't mean to make things sound real easy because sometimes, you know, you got the, wait a minute, how come I have to ask for that? I used to get it for free. So that's kind of one of the things you have to. You can you can take this too far as well. Um, you've got there's a fine line between facilitating. We want to be facilitators. Oh, I've got what you want, and I can help you get this. You're gonna to have to admit a little bit of language, but I'm gonna help you do that. There's a fine line between that and being a pain in the butt. That's ripping the reinforcer away. So, okay, here it is. Say ice cream, ice cream, okay, now I'm gonna take it away. And now I'm gonna give it back, and I'm gonna take it away. Okay. Um, I, I did a consultation once, or I went over this whole spiel, and the next, I came back a month later, and the therapist is running through the house in front of the kid, slamming the door in his face, and making him, his eyes open. Then he runs, and she slams the door, and him. ah, you took that a little too far. So the point is, like, See, if, if the door happens to be closed, make sure the door is closed. Don't go in front of them and deliberately. <laughs> because now it's like, ah, oh, too obviously a teaching trial. So it's like, be a facilitator is, is what it is. Now sometimes, you know, there are times when you have to teach, you, you have to, you have, the kids have to learn to give up the reinforcer. I'm done with that. Or, or you could have this for a minute. Uh, now it's time to, to, to take it back. Um, taking away iPads. Uh, can be difficult, believe me. Um, uh, tell the child and get a drink from the sink, but the footstool is removed. Now, of course, so how you know you teach that, and, and um, are you sure you get a drink by yourself? Um, get up there, and there's the footstool. One day, the footstool is not there. There's a language opportunity, and you can you can take this wherever. It's like you know you can say the kid's coming over here to the sink. You're looking around now, she might try to climb the sink. That's what our kids would probably do: is start, start to climb the sink. But, but yeah, you, know, you can stop that easy by saying, "Oh, you need a foot stool." Okay, and there's this, the, the stool because the stool's missing. You can take that wherever you want. You can say, "I don't know. I don't know where the foot stool is." Ask me where. Where's the foot stool? Oh, someone, something. You can turn it in the social. Well, well, Milbert has it. Oh, okay. Go get it. She's in a. She's in the bedroom, or, or something like that. You can, you can take it however. You can, you can play these, and I say sort of like games. You can turn them, you can actually literally make them games with kids. They love to do this kind of stuff, scavenger hunts. You know? um, but you know what? She's not gonna give you that footstool unless you bring her a pillow. Where do you, you know, off the bed, putting all of those things together. Think about how goofy we are with our kids. You know? Our typical kids making up making up games. So why can't we do that with our? You know, it's just like we go out of our way. So it's almost like when when we're playing with our typical kids, we're we're always doing this stuff to try to teach them and say, what if I what if I give you the wrong thing? What if you ask for a raisin and I give you a peanut? And then and then say, that's not a raisin. Oh, I'm just kidding. You know, we, that's what we want to do with our kids with our, our children and, and young adults with autism, except we just have to make sure that we're doing it at the level that they're at, and that we're providing the prompts that can then be faded. If I didn't think I could ever fade the prompt of, of asking for the, for the footstool, I, would, I wouldn't use that example. There's got to be some, some prerequisites. If, if there's no way that the child could get the water by himself, it's, that's not a good example. The point is, it's just like trying to get you to think in, in this way. Um, ask a child to go to the bedroom and get a pillow for bed. I've already talked about that one. 
ask the student to open the window, but it's locked. Now I'm getting into most of the rest of this. There'll be a lot of examples. And, and, and at the end, I'll put up an email. Ask Cox at the pocket.com. In case you want to write that down if you leave before I put it up. Yeah. S Cox, S C O X, at the pocket.com. She's sitting there in the corner. She will email you a copy of this um, email. I used to tell people to email me, but that could take a while. I'm just now getting back to some people from a month ago. That, so for the quickest results, <laughs> Ask Cox at thebaca.com for quicker results. <laughs> All right. um, give the student the wrong gift to put in the computer. Um, ask the student to find. Now, suppose in the classroom, think about these things. What can you do in a, in a classroom? And, and you can convert these. Okay, you're not in the classroom. These, like I said, I give these examples for classroom activities as well, but you can do this. You don't have to be in a classroom to do this. You can do this in your home. Ask the student to find three items in the classroom that are that are blue and made out of wood. Okay? So that might be something you're working on. Which one's wood, which one's metal? You're at the table, okay. Uh, which one's blue, which one's red? Uh, what's new? Show me new, show me old. And you're holding up these pictures of a new shoe or old shoe and blah, blah, blah. It's like, why? Why, because later we're gonna play this game. Okay, you ready? The kids love this. We do this with our kids all the time. And I'll probably say that again, a lot. We do it with our typical kids all the time. How many people here have typical kids up here 10 or so? You remember? You do this all? Okay, because you know, my daughter, my seven-year-old, always wants to play brain games. And but they just they they want this stuff. But we might say, well, our kids with autism, maybe they don't want it. That's the difference. That's what it is. It's harder. You still should do it. We just have to take that extra step to find, you know. If I, say, if I say to my seven-year-old daughter, say, okay, here we go. I want you to find three things that are blue and made out of wood, and I'll give you a hint. That's all I have to do. She's going to like that. And so the person, well, my kid's not going to want to do that. One, is it in the repertoire? Can you do that? So you have to take that extra step. You have to find some motivation. Say, all right, you want some ice cream? Me too. Let's go get some ice cream. But first, here's what I want, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play this little game. And that, that's okay. Sometimes you have to getting the motivation. That's part of the teaching. Get them excited about it. Um, because you have to remember, they're not always gonna be, they're not reinforced, not all, by the same things that many of us are reinforced by. If you've got, if you've got um, you, know, you know, people say that, that kids with autism aren't social. We've got a lot of kids, a lot of kids that are that are not reinforced by social. That that's harder, but a lot of them, a lot of them are. Um, but if they're not, if, if if saying, "Hey, I like that. Good job," you have to, you have to it, just say, "Good job." That's why whenever I hear someone say, "Hey, good job. That was awesome." But did you reinforce that response? Yeah, I said, "Good job." I know, but did you reinforce that response? So it's like you've got to find, just, just today I spent an hour, just an hour on a case for saying, let's just focus on what's reinforcing. I see what you're doing, but I don't think the kids, you know, you're giving tokens for every three responses, but I don't, I don't think those are very meaningful. You're not getting, let's switch that. And by the end of the session, we switch, scrap, forget that token system for now. At this point, that's not ready. And they're using like tickles and bouncing, and just, now get the kid interested in this activity. Try the reinforcer first. Think about this. Think about, and, and it depends. The, the, <clears throat> the more advanced we are, kids, or, or, or our kids with autism, the more we want to make it like the typical school or life. And so that's when, okay, you do this work, and when you're done with this work, you get to go and play, or you get to you know recess, or you get your grade or something. That's what life is like. But, to start out like that with some of our kids, we need to be re, you know, more actively engaged in reinforcement. So that's why I say in this example today, I switched it from instead of sit here and work at this table for 10 minutes and then you get to have your prize. That's, that's not a good way to start. That's ultimately what we have to get to because that's what real life is like. I just switch that to find out what this kid wants to do right now, right now. Start playing first, we start tickling it. Bouncing. This kid likes to be tickled, likes physical contact, and he's a four-year-old. Four-year-olds don't need to sit down at the table and work for ten minutes to get a 
Peter cries, sort of bounces it on the knee, and, and, and then just, just stop for a second and, and get a response. Reinforce.